Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be evaluating the sum of the fourth powers of consecutive integers 1 through n. So what this means is we have 1 to the fourth power plus 2 to the fourth power plus dot 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 all the way up to n to the fourth power. This is what we're trying to find in terms of n. Now we do know or we should know that for example k equals 1 through n, k is going to be n times n plus 1 divided by 2 or if you're adding the sum of the squares it's also well known, it's equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And for the sum of cubes, that's also very commonly used. And it's kind of interesting because the sum of the cubes is related to this formula. It's just that same formula, but it's squared. All right. So these formulas should be well known, but we're going to be finding something that's not very common. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to be able to find the sum of the fourth powers, I'm going to be using actually a quintic polynomial. So I'm going to start with something like this. k plus 1 to the fifth power, and I'm going to subtract k to the fifth power from it. So let's go ahead and use the binomial formula, k to the fifth power, or binomial theorem. You know, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, right? 1, 5, 10, 10, and 5, 1. This is k plus 1 to the 5th power, and I'm going to subtract k to the 5th power. And here, we, we can just cancel out the k to the 5th power, and this gives us a nicer expression. Now, at this point, the reason why I use 5th powers, let me explain that. I want to get the sum of the 4th powers, and I do know the other ones. So I would like to use this as a reference point, because the only way to get rid of the, you know, the only way to end up getting a 4th power is by using the difference of 5th powers like this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and use our sigma now. Now using the sigma notation, we're going to be separating these into two pieces. So let me go ahead and write this first. I have k plus 1 to the fifth power minus k to the fifth power. So what I'd like to do is, since these two polynomials are equal, I'm just going to add that uh, k equals 1 to n, and obviously both sides are going to be added, and I'm going to be getting something like this on the right hand side, k equals 1 to n, and one of the things I can do with sigma is I can separate these. So let me go ahead and write them separately. k equals 1 through n, 10k cubed, and then plus k equals 1 through n, 10k squared, and then I get k equals 1 through n, 5k, and finally I get k equals 1 through n, 1. And of course, if you're adding 1n times, you're going to be getting n from there. So now, at this point, what I'd like to do is I'd like to separate these two expressions into two sigmas because Sigma allows us to do that, so let me go ahead and write them separately. And since it's, it's not going to fit here, I'm going to be using the next line for this. So this is my difference that I'm trying to get. And what is on the right hand side? I'm going to go ahead and take out these coefficients because you can basically factor them out. And then we'll see what happens with, with each one. So first of all, I'm getting five times what I need, which is k equals 1 to the n, k to the fourth power. And then I get 10 times the sum of the cubes, and then I'm getting 10 times the sum of the squares, and then I get 5 times the sum, 1 through n, and finally this is going to be n. Okay, now what happens on the left hand side is that can be simplified, so let's go ahead and simplify that. Now take a look at this, and I'm going to be expanding it. When I expand it, it's going to give me something nice. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Start with k equals 1 here, you're going to get 2 to the 5th power. So I start with 2 to the 5th, and then I continue all the way up to n. When I replace k with n here, I get n plus 1 to the 5th power. But let me go ahead and write n to the 5th power, and then n plus 1 to the 5th power. Because I want to show you which terms cancel out. And here, k equals 1, so we get 1 to the 5th, 2 to the 5th, all the way up to n to the fifth power. And obviously a lot of terms cancel out here, 2 to the fifth through n to the fifth, 2 to the fifth through n to the fifth. And the left hand side basically gives me n plus 1 to the fifth power minus 1, because 1 to the fifth power is 1. So that's what I get from the left hand side. What about the right hand side right here? Well, we do know that there's a formula for this, there's a formula for that, and there's a formula for that. We just talked about it, right? So let's go ahead and plug it in, but the first thing is what I'm trying to find, so basically at the end I'm going to be isolating that, okay? So this expression is now equal to, let's go ahead and write it down, we get 5 times, you know, the expression k equals 1 through n, k to the fourth power, and then I have plus 10 times, 
And one of the things you can do is you can just plug in the formulas here. We have the cube formula, which is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And you're supposed to square that. And then plus I have the 10 times the sum of squares, which is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And then plus 5 times n, n plus 1 divided by 2. And finally, plus n. Okay. So that is basically my sum n. It is equal to n plus 1 to the fifth power minus 1. And this is what I'm looking for. So I should be isolating this term right here. And during the isolation, if you go ahead and multiply both sides by 6, it's also going to simplify. So let's see what this looks like. Let me go ahead and uh, subtract everything on the right-hand side except for this one from n plus 1 to the fifth power minus 1 and see what happens after that. So I'm going to end up with this expression right here to the fourth power is equal to, let's see what that looks like. And here, one of the things that I'd like to do is I'd like to take out n plus 1 to the fifth power. So let me go ahead and write it this way first, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is going to give me minus 10 times n plus 1 over, and n plus 1 over 2 squared, minus 10 times n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1, over 6 minus 5 times n, n plus 1 over 2 minus n. Okay, so everything is being subtracted from the left hand side. And let me go ahead and simplify this a little bit for you. And then I'll show you what the next step is going to look like. Okay, so we're going to be making, and at this point, if you want, we can go ahead and multiply both sides by 6. And that's going to give us the following. I'm going to be skipping some of these calculations because they are going to take too long and I know that people don't like long videos. So, to keep a long story short, this is what we're going to be getting from here. And notice that here we have n plus 1 to the fifth power, we have n plus 1, we have n plus 1, and here we have a negative 1 minus n, which can be written as negative 1 times n plus 1. So n plus 1 is a common factor. I'll pull that out, okay, and then when I pull that out, I'm going to be getting something like this inside the parentheses. I'm going to be getting 6n to the fourth power plus 9n cubed plus n squared minus n. Again, I simplified all of this for you to save some time here. And let's see what this gives us. Notice that here we're getting, we're getting n as a common factor. So I can go, go ahead and pull that out, n times n plus 1. And that should give me 6n cubed plus 9n squared plus n minus 1. Now we're almost done. We're just going to divide both sides by, you know, 30. And let's go ahead and do that and get our expression in the simplest form. So this gives us the expression n times n plus 1 times 6n cubed plus 9n squared plus n minus 1. Now you might be thinking, is that expression factorable or not? And actually it is. One of the things you can do here is use the rational root theorem. Factors of 1 divided by factors of 6. You, those are candidates and you can kind of test them out. And at the end you're going to realize that actually negative one half is a solution to that. So we can factor out at 2n plus 1 from here. And the other factor is very easy to calculate. You can, you can divide or just do something like that. And it's going to be factored like this. And that's going to be the sum of the fourth powers. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.